Hmm. Well, it is mailbag time again, or mail bowl time, as the case may be. God made Eve, not Steve, as a companion for Adam. End of story. It's very simple, Justin. I don't know why Eve and Steve and Adam are all in quotation marks. If I had a nickel uh, for every time I, that I've heard the Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve thing, uh, I would have, well, I'd have a lot of nickels. First of all, I don't think this is a good argument. There are some reasonable biblical arguments you could make against same-sex marriage. This is not one of them. To say that because the first couple was heterosexual, therefore means all couples must be heterosexual, is such a weird stretch. Honestly, it would be like saying that because God tells Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply, every couple must therefore have kids. Um, or because the first couple was named Adam and Eve, every couple must be named Adam and Eve. You can only marry people who are named Adam or Eve, which of course is ridiculous. Nobody would say that. This story isn't even about the difference between Adam and Eve. It's about the similarity between them. I mean, the, the point of this story is that Adam needed a companion who was like himself. God starts off by looking at creation and saying that all of creation is good, and then saying, oh, actually, one thing's not good. It's not good that the man should be alone, which part of that is God recognizing, hey, Adam needs somebody besides just me. And God looks at all the animals and brings all the animals to Adam in a weird moment and says uh, that there are no suitable companions for Adam among the animals. So Adam needs a companion like himself, not God, not an animal. God then makes Eve, who Adam calls bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, and the point here is, look, Adam needed somebody like himself. Now, of course, Adam and Eve are different. Um, of course they are. We need a uh, sex difference in the first couple for the purpose of procreation, right? Which doesn't mean every couple needs to procreate, but at least this one needed to. But also, I think it, even in a same-sex couple, you don't want to be with somebody who's who's your identical, your clone. That would be weird. Um, you want to be with somebody who compliments you, gay or straight. I think I think that's true. But the point of this passage is not to condemn same-sex couples or childless couples or couples whose names aren't Adam and Eve. This is a, a, a story, a beautiful story, about God recognizing the, the needs of this first person and, and meeting those needs. Now, I think when people say Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, the reason they're saying that is that they believe deep down that sexual orientation is a choice. They imagine that I'm I'm sort of looking at my my options for a life partner and saying, well, hmm, I could choose a woman, but uh, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna buck the system. I I, I need to be different, so I'm gonna choose a man. And that's just not how it works. It's not how any of this works. <laughs> As a gay man, I don't have any attraction to women. I know I you know this is a more complicated discussion if you're bisexual, but but I'm not. I, I'm gay. This person was writing to me. I can't make myself be attracted to women. So in this text, we see that God doesn't just create. Uh, a friend for Adam. God creates a sexually attractive partner. Um, Adam and Eve have a desire for each other, and, and God put that there. If I were to build a, a relationship with a woman, it would be somebody I had no feelings for, no desire for, which I, I would not be at all like what Adam and Eve had. So my choice here is not between, uh, you know, m a male or female version of this relationship, you know, between heterosexuality and homosexuality. My options here are be alone or be with uh, someone I feel nothing for and potentially ruin their life, which I just couldn't do in good conscience, or have the closest thing that I'm able to have to what Adam and Eve had, uh, a, a loving, mutual relationship with somebody, mutual desire, mutual attraction, serve God together like Adam and Eve had. But in my case, that would have to be with a guy. That's the only option that I have if I want to have that kind of relationship. 
if you, if your message to me is that I have to be alone, I would hope that you would feel like you would only be able to communicate that message to me through tears. That it would really just break your heart to think about how hard that would be for me. And um, and, 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 and this kind of flippant message um, is not that. This is not the message of somebody who's really considered what life looks like for a gay Christian and whose heart is breaking when they say, I'm so sorry, but the the Bible just won't allow this thing that, that you want so badly. This is the message of somebody who really hasn't thought much about it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Um, if you feel led to, I would love it if you liked and subscribed um, because those things will help boost me in YouTube's rankings so that more people will see this. Also, if you want to help me make more videos like this, um, I, I would love it if you would support me on Patreon. You can do that by going to geekyjustin.com slash Patreon, where you can learn about what Patreon is if you don't know about it, and what kinds of rewards you can get. But whether you do or not, thank you so much for watching, and I will look forward to making more of these videos for you very soon. Keep those comments coming. Even if you disagree with me, keep them coming. It's fun times. It's fun times.